The 1950 British Grand Prix, the season where Giuseppe Farina became the first world driver champion and home of the first Formula One race. Right? Well, kinda. While it was the first world champion race, it was not the first Formula One race. So, if this race wasn't first, then what is? Before we understand why this was not the first race, let's dive into the early childhood of Formula One. Grand Prix racing was a form of racing that grew popular in France during the early 1900s. It started off with drivers racing each other from one town to another on the roads. In 1904, the Association Internationale des Automobiles Club Reconnu, or AIACR, was formed as a response to the growing interest in motorsports. The AIACR would then go on to create the European Championship, an annual series that would consist of multiple Grand Prix races. The series ran from 1931 to 1939 before it halted to a stop after a suspension of racing during World War II. After the war was over, the AIACR was renamed to what we are familiar with today, the Fédération Internationale de Automobiles, or FIA. Eager to return to racing, the FIA created multiple different racing categories, one of which was Formula A, or often called Formula One. In this category, the cars must be constructed within a set of rules, or formula, in order to race. There is often some debate about the very first Formula One race. Although the first official world champion race was the 1950 British Grand Prix like I mentioned earlier, the first Formula One race is considered by many to be the 1946 Turin Grand Prix. This is because it was the first race under these new formula regulations even though there was no organized championship and the rules were set to be officially introduced the following year on January 1st, 1947. The 1946 Turin Grand Prix was held at Valentino Park in Turin, Italy on September 1st, 1946. The track was a street circuit that spanned roughly 4.5 kilometers or roughly 2.7 miles around the roads of the park. There were 23 drivers that made up 18 teams, 12 of which were private entries and were not associated with a team. A notable group during this race was Alfa Romeo, where they had 5 drivers enter to pilot the Alfa Romeo 158. One of these 5 Alfa Romeo drivers was Giuseppe Farina, who qualified on pole. However, when the lights went out, if they even had lights, the race turned into a measure of reliability and endurance as three drivers failed to qualify and 11 additional drivers had to retire the car with a majority of them being due to mechanical failure. One of these 11 drivers was pole sitter Farina himself, where he was not able to even complete one lap before having problems with the differential of his car. As for the rest of the 9 drivers, it was no competition, as two Alfa Romeo 158s blew the rest of the grid out of the water with a first and second place finish. The winner, Akil Varsi, finished the 60 laps of the race in just 2 hours, 35 minutes, and 45 seconds, while his teammate Jean-Pierre Wimil finished just half a second behind him and set the fastest lap of 2 minutes and 22 seconds. Meanwhile, third place finished over 2 laps behind second, with some drivers finishing over 10 laps behind first. This just goes to show how much the performance of the cars varied and how successful the 158 and its 159 variant was where they would go on to win 47 of the 54 Grand Prix it entered, over a 87% win rate. The 158 was a 1.5 liter 8 cylinder, hence the name 158. It was equipped with a supercharger and started off producing 200 brake horsepower. Eventually, the 158 was modified in 1947, capable of producing over 300 brake horsepower. 300 horsepower is absolutely insane for that time. I mean, some sports cars today don't even have that much horsepower. Ultimately, it may have been deemed to be too much power, when during the 1948 Swiss Grand Prix, Akil Varsi lost control in the wet and crashed the car, killing him. In the following year, during the 1949 Buenos Aires Grand Prix, Jean-Pierre Wimille was also involved in an accident where he lost control of his car during a practice run and crashed into a tree. 
though this was with a different car. The top two drivers during the 1946 Turin Grand Prix in fatal accidents just a few years after the first checkered flag. This just goes to show how dangerous Formula One was during his early days. So much so, that after Varsi's death, the FIA mandated that crash helmets must be worn during the race as they were only optional before. Formula One drivers back then were simply built different. Well, that's it for this story. Be sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to stay tuned for future uploads, like where I'll go over the history of safety in Formula One.